All right, so it's a few hours on. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Feeling the, the cogs turning me in, in different fucking directions than what I'm usually trained to, and a bit of a swooshiness and just dis slight disorientation, which is great because it's only once you're disoriented that you are then open to reorient yourself somewhere else other than where you were. And if you stay where you were for too long, then uh, things get stagnant, right? And you turn into like a, a concrete gargoyle. So moving away from where I was, now I'm here, moving forward, different direction, different oriented fucking position. Still orienting though, haven't, haven't landed on my feet. It's all swishing really. But it's good, it's a good swish, because a swish, a swish can be like, ooh, nauseating, or it can be like, ooh, exhilarating, and it's much towards the, the latter than the former for me, so that's, it's good, it's going good. We were just discussing, um, me and my, my good friend, J to the A to the S111, um, about this guy. This is my little awesome monkey dude that, this is like a painting I drew on the floor in a house years ago. Because um, my awesome monkey is basically, uh, back then, an idea I came up with. That it's my, my video camera that I had. And I had it strapped to my wrist all the time. Took it everywhere with me. I filmed everything. I was obsessed with it. And we were pretty much tied together as one. It was an extension of me. And I was an extension of it. So I came up with the concept of all seeing monkey or ASM. Originally, because I want to do this journalistic thing where I like take down Rupert Murdoch and fuck all the false news and their bullshit propaganda and lies. So, um, you know, the idea of it being the monkey is the whole hear all evil, hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. But if it's journalism, then it would actually be hear all evil, which is what a camera does. It records the audio. So hear all evil and then see all evil, record the visual, speak all evil play it back for people to watch and listen to. So hear all evil, see all evil, speak all evil. That was the initial conception of it for that journalistic idea. And then, um, so I drew a symbol for it. And as you see here, you see the A, the S, the M. And then I extended it further to represent the person themselves who yields or wields the camera being also an all-seeing monkey, as well as holding an all-seeing monkey, the, something that records and everything. And the idea is this, that your head is the spade, and for those that are in the know, the spade represents transformation, because as a spade digs a hole, it also builds a mound, so it's destructive yet creative at the same time, so it's transformative, yes? So it's good to have your mind open to transformation, have a spade where your head is, have the heart where the body is, meaning that all the extensions of you into the world, all the extensions that manipulate the world through your hands and your arms and all the extensions that move you and make you mobile in the world so wherever you go whatever you do should come from the heart with an open mind was the idea i didn't i didn't intend for this but if you flip the image you get this little bad boy and now you see you've got this legless figure kind of looks like pan as opposed to the man and you got this pan element of this dancing fire body legless creature with these horns or antennae heart for a head spade for a body so this at the time um i thought would uh represent philosophically speaking if this is the ideal way to be to act from your heart with an open mind then this represents being impulsive letting your emotions and your hedonistic uh, pleasures rule you your legs you don't really have any anymore so your body is like a spade but now it's upside down so it's but it's still a spade so your body's constantly changing where your foundations are where you stand what you're doing um, your balance is completely debased and you're com completely moving all over the place as ruled by the head um, but now I've come to uh, and the reason why this number is here by the way uh, it's because my monkey, my all-seeing monkey, um, actually, he died. My original all-seeing monkey, it just malfunctioned. It stopped working on the 9th of the 9th, 2009, right? And I cried. I cried hard when it died because, like I said, this thing was a part of me. 
And some heavy things happened that year, some lots of big things, and nothing brought it here, but that, it shook me. All right. So I put down a little mural on the paint uh, on the on the floor um, between the shed and the house of the monkey hut and the crack den. <laughs> Those fucking assholes. But anyway, and I put nine 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 for the date, which is a godly number, just so it happens. And then if you flip it, you get six six six. Um, but now I've come to view it as that maybe it's not so much that pan or you know, Satan or Lilith, whatever, isn't really the evil one, but n and neither, neither is God the, the good one. I mean, you could say that one is more about mercy and love and compassion and creativity, and the other one's more about severity and, um, you know, destruction and, um, you know, not so good things. But you need both of those. You need severity, mercy, destruction, create creativity, to keep a balance. So I would say that now that this still adheres to the idea of the person that wields the journalistic camera for the purpose of filming into the shadowy recesses of what people are trying to hide in the world, what our masters are trying to hide from us to expose them, to bring to light all the evil that they would say, hear no, see no, speak no. I would say, no, hear it all, see it all and show it, film it. Film the audio, film the visual, show people the evil. Let your heart take you there and rule you with an open mind. But I think we need to have a balance of this. We need to have a balance of having our head just this, this completely open, transformative, kind of logical and strictly rational, non-fixative kind of way of operating. Um, where our heart kind of guides our movements. We also, sometimes we need to... Forget where we stand, forget where our legs plant us, forget what we know, what has been established in our foundations. And we need to let our body itself and where we, you know, let our legs disappear because our body itself, where our heart used to reside, is a, becomes an ethereal, transcendent, shifting kind of force. Still, we've got the same arm structure, so that indicates that you're channeling information from the creative left up from the heavens, which makes sense, because you're left where the yin is, is the receptive arm. So we receive, and this is the magician in the tower, it receives information from the heavens. And then with the right arm, where yang resides, it transmits that information down into form, into the earth. It takes the ethereal code and it encodes it into the material world that you can measure. And that which we then, once again, decode to bring back to the ethereal world of coding information versus form or not versus but you know what i mean so i would say that you really need a balance of this that this isn't necessarily evil or the bad way to be that sometimes you need to forget where you stand you're still taking information from the right place and putting it into the earth that's the only way it could be but this time you're letting your heart take the place of where your your rational left brain logic mind used to be that's why you got no legs because now you're thinking with your heart you're thinking with your right brain and when you think with your right brain which in psychology and just genetics if you don't know the brain structure you've got the two hemispheres the left brain is the calculating rational logical um deductive deducing discriminating discerning through comparisons or similarities and differences the differentiating part of your brain that helps you navigate through the world like a GPS, purely a physical means operating system. All right, physical means, as opposed to non-physical meaning or ethereal meaning, which the right brain is much more inept or adapt, adapt or apt at dealing with. Um, so henceforth, they say the right brain is um, all about creativity as opposed to it being about dividing the world we see into parts and taking away and being a deductive, deducive reasoning element, the right side does the opposite. So it unifies the unseen, hidden, and abstract principles and patterns that we perceive underlining everything. That seems separate, that the left brain separates so that we can differentiate, which we need to do, 
Because you can't just be like, hey you, no not you, you, no not you, you. We need to be able to be like, hey Jim, as opposed to Mary. Because we differentiated the two entities, gave them different names to consolidate the differentiation. And now we can refer to two different entities, but the right brain. In this world, Mary and Jim are united. Spiritually speaking, informationally speaking, consciously speaking, they share the same wave blanket of information despite their seemingly perceptible individual particulate states well apart from each other. Then the way in the scientific world of wavelengths, everything's connected. Um, and the right brain is more adept at seeing and understanding that that interconnection interconnectedness and of perceiving that metaphysical intuitive wisdom as opposed to the physical determined and calculated knowledge of the outer world because you know when we see through this we're just seeing the world we're making sense of it this is our, our, we're puppets on the stage, and this is our means, our physical means, and this is our operating system, our left brain, for knowing how to navigate through this world of physicality. But it's not for no reason. The world isn't just here to just be felt and expressed physically, but it's more so a physical means, and means means that it has to mean be a means for something, right? So what's it a means for? Well, obviously, meaning. A physical means for non-physical meaning. So the left brain deals with physical, you know, calculations that allows you as a puppet through this simulation, if you will, to explore, to interact, to create, to do things in a deliberated, logical, planned, and, and left brain perceptible fashion. But then your right brain takes that information, which the left brain helps to I guess decode and your right brain encodes encodes the information that is learned the meanings that are that are experienced within every interaction within every experience because if you're just going through the motions without your heart in it without your right brain in it and you're not being philosophical you're not appreciating the artistic beauty of everything and that's pretty much in psychology going back to the point of the difference between the two hemispheres is one is just calculating it's a means and the other one is abstract and it unifies it doesn't divide and subtract but it multiplies and it adds and it looks for ways that things are i guess similar so you got the separator here and then you got the similarizer here looking for similarities and that's i think children start off being a lot more right brain because you'll notice it doesn't matter what color you are um kids you know unless you teach them to be racist from a young age um they'll just they'll just hang out they'll love each other they'll they'll see no difference in the skin color or in the language even if they speak a different language you can still give them some some playing blocks some toys and they'll play together happily living life exploring life asking questions about life even if it's through their actions and discovering and learning the answers to those questions those curiosities that, that drive that children all children have why 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 the, the same thing that adults poke fun at when they're like, oh, the kids are always asking, why, 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 why? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? They're asking, are we there yet? Because they're tired of being strapped into one little fucking box for hours. They just want to get to the, the part where they're moving again, right? Where they're exploring again, where they're in motion and learning and interacting with the world. It's very right brain. Because, you know, like I said, they see other kids, doesn't matter about the skin color, they're unified in that universal place that we all have within us. The kid doesn't die. The kid doesn't die. People say you've got to keep the child alive. You've got to, you know, or nurture the inner child. It's no fucking such thing as an inner child. We are the child. We were born in this world as entities. Fuck this whole child-adult dichotomy. Entities. Well, this child is boy shitless of this monologue. Yeah. So anyway, I think the whole point is about balance between the right and the left. Um, and that's obvious if you look at the world, um, that they would have you convinced that the vehicle is a means to just purchase yourself another nice looking vehicle, a better vehicle to keep upgrading, to make your current vehicle more convenient, more, you know, better features. 
but less less so much focus on meaning philosophically and artistically and spiritually so i think we need to get away from this all-seeing monkey spade in the head position a little bit more than what we're currently fixated and we need to be a little bit more open to letting our inner pan come out and to losing our footing and just letting our feelings unite us with some deep deep truth that you cannot measure with a microscope but you can certainly come to know through the only way that you can through your antennae to the heavens anyway cheers guys i'm tripping balls with my good friend jace the hds 111 it's all about initiation up in here and um we'll catch you soon probably when we're up a few more gears <laughs>